Uh, take the handles, point it directly at me. Everybody look over Katie's shoulders. You guys see me in there? Yeah, like, yep. Yes. Okay. Yep. So this is the, what they call the stick man camera, right? So it's technically called an SLS camera, structured yeah, light sensors. So this thing is shooting thousands of lasers over at me and whatever's in front of something else, wherever the laser is shortest, it puts the stick man figure on it. So basically it picks up on everything that's in front of something else. It'll pick up on trees, Ron lurking in the darkness, um, signs, <laughs> you guys have seen the point. It picks up literally on everything, but I am gonna point out a few things. Uh, do I have three points for my face? Yes. yes. I have two eyes and a nose. That's the depth of my face. My eyes are behind my face, my nose is in front. That's the three points. That's the first thing I look for when I find an anomaly in there and I'm not sure what's going on, I look for the three points. In the event you see something in there, Katie, and you're not sure what it is, you can ask them to do something. If you are a ghost that we are looking for, can you please raise your right hand? Obviously, you will have a reaction. Um, so those are usually the only stamps of approval that I would put if we have that kind of direct reaction on something. Um, when I do find something in this, when I'm going through the spot check, it is a lot of screenshots. So I can brighten it up to make sure that it's not Ron, a sign, a tree. You guys are seeing the point. Um, if I find something, you will get both the screenshots of the dark and the light ones. Um, so that way you guys can see what I'm looking at. Uh, along with the marker, so you can actually watch it interact or move. Uh, it's kind of an interesting piece when it actually does happen. Uh, same thing on this one, about four to five pieces per year, stamp of approval. Uh, dozens and dozens of others where I'm like, mm, not really sure. I'll kind of throw it in there. It's a maybe. Uh, that's kind of how that one worked. Um, so you can hit that stop button on your end. History, and then we're going to spread out. I'll do one or two Ron Robbins with everybody to kind of see what's going on. Take a bunch of notes and regroup us to give you all of the answers. So keep in mind, anybody with a communicating device, uh, and you guys can interchange with who you came with. I know it seems kind of odd even though you all came with just one other person, but um, if you came at four or five people, you would be at an, at an advantage because you'd be able to swap out a bunch of devices. So feel free to swap them out. Um, but uh, communicators, this is where I start with holding information on purpose. I do not want you looking for all of the answers that you may know. I'm not going to give you questions here like what color was George Washington's white horse, for example. <laughs> you will get the answers from your communicators. That's how this works. That's the fun part. Now, where the heck are you? You're in a smelly old parking lot with a big, giant, nasty dumpster at the end. Um, I told you, I take you to weird spots and Ron's looking at me like, what the hell are we doing here? I love the look on his face right now. Um, but this place used to be something. It used to be the Charles and Eliza. Charles and Eliza Pinckney Mansion. You're standing right in the middle of it. So the mansion was up here in the front of the space. Uh, Eliza's garden lined up with Five Church Restaurant and went all the way across. And then the servant and slave quarters were in the back of the hall. That's the layout of the land. Who the hell were these people? Charles and Eliza had a son named Charles. They had a nephew named Charles. That's three different Chucks, in case you weren't paying attention. <laughs> That's why we look for the secondary clues. In the event that somebody hears the name Charles, I need to know which one it is so I know how to address them. They're, it's a different person. So you guys get the point. Moving on. The son and the nephew are signers of the Constitution for South Carolina. It's a big deal for us, but I hate politics more than all of you combined, especially what are we, 20 days away from an election? Yep. Yeah, nobody likes politics right now. If I don't give the gentleman their recognition, they will do it for me in a nasty manner through a spirit box. So I just do it every night and we move on and talk about Eliza instead. Eliza, she marries Charles at a young age according to today's standards. I say it slowly because if you're gonna ask her how old she was when she got married, do not expect numbers from when young girls got married in colonial times at like 12 and 14. Think of today's standards because the husband was over double her age. So just kind of put those perspectives in the back of your brain. I'm not going to tell you what those numbers are. Moving on. Correct. Uh, dad was basically over in England and he thinks he's dying and he wants to bring all of his kids home so he can see them. And Eliza didn't believe he was dying. So instead she stayed put right here and got married. It's 1744. You do not get married in that year to earn a green card. We're not a country yet. There's no such thing. Um, she did marry him out of love. Guys, This is there's nothing horrific about this space. It's a true love story, and it's actually a place of respect, believe it or not, even though people are parking where her house once stood. But she was correct. Dad did not die right away, and instead he starts sending her gifts from England to where you're standing. One of those gifts happened to be the plant seeds of indigo. That's a plant that makes blue dye that makes your blue jeans blue. A lot of you have it on tonight because that's what we use it for. Uh, when she got the seeds, though, she had to learn from her servants how to keep it going. It's not always hot here, as you guys can all see with your bundled up jackets and hoodies. Um, but then she learned how to make the dye and moved into a cash crop. Got a hold of dad overseas and told him that the rice plantations were going downhill. They were going to make a killing with the indigo. And they did. And we now have an international businesswoman during colonial times. That is something absolutely unheard of. So that's the boring business stuff of Eliza. Let's get into the weird shit because that's why you guys showed up. So here's what's going to happen. I am going to try to control this as much as possible. So with every person with a uh, communicator, I'm going to give you a set of questions, focus or out loud, however you want to do it. Um, there's no right or wrong way. I'm here every night. She already knows what you're about to ask. If you go rogue and ask your own questions, 
No yes, no questions. Be respectful and do not ask Eliza about her children. All activity will stop, including the EMF readings that we've already gotten. So I've seen it dozens of times. So here's how it'll work. Um, so Dana and Jacob, you're gonna have the same set of questions. Just gonna, you guys have the spirit box that gives us the most. You're gonna focus on Eliza's death. Okay. So four major questions we get answers to. Age at time of death, how she died, where she's buried, which president was a pallbearer at her funeral. So those are the four majors, age, how, where, president. That's the easiest way to remember that. Um, so with yours, Miss Sarah, yeah. have I screwed up anybody's name yet, by the way? No, you're doing awesome. Uh -oh. Good, you're just, good. Just wanna make sure. Um, so anybody remember my name? Yeah. Nick. <laughs> Not Nick. <laughs> where did that come from? I came from somebody, I heard it. Um, so Sarah, with yours, um, yours is gonna be kind of a catch-all for all of the other questions because we don't know where the answers are always gonna fall. Um, so Dana over here might ask a question. It might go to any of the other devices, including the audio from cameras. Um, so with yours, I'm going to have you have the same questions as what Ms. Dawn is going to have. And you guys are going to focus on what happened to the mansion. It's not here anymore. So ask what happened to it. If we get the what, we will often get two or three numbers from the exact date of when that tragedy occurred. I just gave you a clue. It's a tragedy. Um, so just kind of keep that in the back of your brain. Um, you can also, if you wanted to, go a little bit deeper into Eliza's marriage. Only because Eliza's maiden name starts with the letter L. And the only reason I'm telling you this is because the one Eliza that I told you about is the second wife named Eliza from Charles back to back. Uh, the first wife named Eliza also has a maiden name that started with the letter L. So both Eliza's, both of Charles' wives, have the exact same initials. Try to figure out which Eliza we're dealing with here. And I'll reveal what those answers are before we separate, uh, or when we, before we leave the space. Um, so, um, I'm just looking around because one of my devices actually broke today. I tried to fix it and I made it even worse. I know it seems weird because I tried to untangle uh, Dana's thing and like, just don't touch the equipment, Nick, you make it worse. Um, but yeah, this thing was like, I'm looking around like, where's that device at? And we're not using it because the damn thing broke. Um, any other readings that I need to know out of the two of you? I got zeros. Zeros? Okay. Um, so I don't think I need to show anybody anything else extra. So Naomi, do you have anything weird coming out of there? Because I'm seeing that thing go nuts on the top. Uh, I don't think I hear anything. It's, it's going to be really low. Oh, okay. So. Listen. Yeah, you'll get it. All right, let's spread out. I'll, I'll be with everybody in just a minute. I'm going to keep Sarah with me for just a minute so I can show her how to get to that word list because I don't want to see it. Okay. Uh, but yeah, everybody spread out. Stay away from the vehicles. <laughs> Showing your shadow. Yeah. <laughs> What was that?
get out of my picture. Wait, go back to the right. That was him. Uh, no, it wasn't. Yes. That's that... not him. That's a tree. It's a tree. No, it's not. It's behind him. Oh, is it him? No, it is him, yeah. Oh, okay. Look no, like but whatever was the in the right. car wasn't him on the left. But I think it's just picking up weird things. Oh. See, because it's doing it over there, too. I just keep hearing stuff about Jelly Roll, which is a singer. I feel like this should be on AM. I feel like AM is too much. Hello? Mm-hmm. 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 That's him. Is there. See, what the, it's the sign though. It's the sign. That's a lady. That's No, because it just keeps picking up on the people.
Yes. There's an absence of light, so just kind of keep that in mind. Yeah. Um, so just kind of keep in mind it's not a ghost on the ground. Yeah. It's just you. And it's picking up on the signs yep. and like in the trees and stuff too. So anything with leaves is not your friend. All leaves are in front of another leaf, just kind of like how tight my nose and eyes are. Yeah. Um, leaves are the exact same way, yeah. so it's always going to make it look like a hangman in the tree. Yeah. Um, that's why I was telling them, like, it is a lot of uh, debunking with that particular camera. Yeah. So, so I'm just trying to keep it, like, low yep. nice enough. And low. Yep, nice and slow movements. So this is where the mansion was. This yep, we're standing right in the middle of it. Okay. I mean, it was literally right here in the front. Okay, cool. I love when I get these people that just wander over, like, what's happening? Yeah, what are y'all doing? Instead of talking to the guy that's leading the show. <laughs> well, because you're not holding the tech right now. No. <laughs> Oh, that's my shadow. Huh? That was a whiz. But, like, it's picking up on the sign a lot. Respectful, Jacob. Okay, sir. I'm cold and I would like to go. Also, I don't. I keep hearing Donald Trump. Seeing here, this wall and the stairs actually belong to a restaurant in the early 2000s. Uh, it was uh, called the uh, But that's what you're seeing here. This is not a Yeah, I'll get it. 
Now, the thing it just keeps picking up is right around, um, like, that's where that sign is, but then also the other pillar. Yeah. But it has, like, arms, legs, and a body, but it doesn't have a head. Okay. So that's yeah. more than likely just picking up on the pillar. Yeah. Yeah, bumped. Sure. Love it. Uh, let's see, let's see. Jacob, have you heard anything? You got anything that you've heard since last we spoke? I uh, heard a girl laughing. Girl laughing. That's pretty much. Okay. Everything else is just radio chatter. And that's what we want. Remember, I don't care if it's a Toyota commercial. Oh, I mean, it was, it was a Kendrick Lamar song. Well, so the ghosts don't give a shit who sang it. They wanted the lyric. So think of that thing as kind of like Bumblebee from Transformers. Like, I know you guys have one and you've used it on different speeds, but use that radio chatter. There's no way to determine on your TV shows that it's not the radio chatter coming through. Yeah. So my theory is use it, and you'd be surprised how much you actually pick up. Yeah, no, it's just not saying anything relative though either remember i'm withholding a lot of information True. too True. i haven't heard any of your dreams yeah so names now the numbers no names or numbers for now okay sarah where are we at with that list let me see it Oh, let's see. There we go. We got something coming through what do you got going on anything um i don't i don't know we were just to you in a few minutes what do you got going on huh what have you heard a lot I just keep writing down the words what did well read them off i'll cherry pick it um 81 200 to 300 530 sick body 51 taxes 21 30 three beautiful things hurricane arms dealer girl sleeping All them numbers are not one of them matches up in my brain so i could be wrong i always dive into the numbers to see if there's a date that we're missing like that 5 30 could be may 30th 
you gotta see how my, my brain looks at mm -hmm. things. But yeah. all those other things could be like sick and body go together because you also did get the word disease. Where's Sarah at? I hear. Um, yeah, sorry, you were hiding. Um, so we did get that. So we're gonna talk about that. It's all very vague. Yeah. Um, and again, I hope you guys appreciate the honesty. Like I'm not here to make shit up. Like yeah. if we're getting yeah. stuff, yeah. we're gonna get stuff. I am excited about what did we get all the way up to in our EMF? 38. I had a 38. And then I we had think a 58. I had a 58 point. Yeah. I think it was. So 58. Let's talk about those numbers for just a minute so you guys know what we're looking at. By the way, if you have a camera, you can hit the stop button and relax. So just kind of keep that in mind, or we'll come in the way that we did. If regular people, we're going to go ahead and put you on mute. Um, if regular people would like to just walk through here, we're going to lower our cameras, just point it directly at your feet. We'll split the seas and let them pass through. Sure. Um, so again, try not to make, and it's just weird that there's nobody down here right now on a Saturday night in October. Um, we're going to talk about that in just a minute. But let's go around the horn and see what you guys all heard. Ryan killed me being number one. What else did we get? And then I heard it against the wall. Against the wall. Okay, other spirit boxes, Halloween. what do we got? Yeah, I got Halloween too. Halloween? Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's, it's, it's, that's... It's Halloween, yeah. so... <laughs> Pretty damn close, too easy. Donna, nothing? I, I got I Charles. Okay. I heard Charles. Okay, where did you get the Charles at? <laughs> uh, walking by Cumberland. Okay. See, word list, where are we at with that, Sarah? Prefer. Yeah, go ahead and tap that little white box. Let's get to like the last four or five times. Right here? Yep. Prefer support, uh, certain writing, craft. We got, we got people coming. Yep, people coming. Let's split the seats. Like grading, where'd you get that at? Is that over closer to here? You know what? I don't know. Uh, that's why we have timestamps on everything. It's How you doing? It's kind of weird. <laughs> oh, that's right, that's right. So, we're going to be rating for some interesting. Um, we're going to let this whole bird pass through, though, because this is one of those normal large birds that comes through here. Uh, EMF readings, by the way. Remember, we're starting off at an 8 um, with those EMF meters. Uh, let's Mayo, let's feel free to. That's a normal size to go store. Yeah. So, I'll, I'll point it. Nothing. Point um, six. Point six. You okay over there? Yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm getting something on the bottom. That's the temperature, so that probe might be starting to go bad. I have okay. a whole bucket of them at home because okay. it happens all the time. I thought um, it said Eliza, but I think it just said Lizzo. 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 <laughs> Lizzo. <laughs> um, <laughs> by the way, that was a normal size ghost tour, just okay. so you guys know. Like, wow. this is why I only do this size group at a max and why I don't answer the phone when I'm already sold out. There's no yeah. point. Yeah. Um, I already know all of your names. I think I've only screwed up once, and I think that was in my own brain. I don't think I let you guys know about it. <laughs> um, so, um, but this place, every ghost tour comes down here. Uh, there's about 300 plus ghost tours in Charleston. They all come down here, and I was going to take this out of my route, but I decided to keep it in because this guy follows me around. Uh, we will be near a place of raised emotion for this guy from here moving forward. Mm -hmm. um, so he has a code word that he has to let me know that he's around that comes through spirit boxes. Um, and it can show up on the word list device too. We've seen that before. Um, but I'm not going to tell you guys what that code word is until later on. And only some of you will know what that code word is. And John is looking at me like, wow, this guy's like got some weird shit going on. Like you just <laughs> keep doing like, that. I'm just like, <laughs> yeah. What's the code word? I can't tell Good you what time. it is. I don't want you guys looking for it. That way. It's no, because then I'll start to think I heard it. Right, exactly. exactly. That's, That's why I'm not telling you what it is. I'll just tell you it's not a common thing that you would hear <coughs> on the radio. So when it comes through, it's a for sure thing. Um, so we all come down here. Let me tell you the story. I'm going to give you a few extra details because we're not on the campfire marshmallow ghost story. Did I point that way? I sure as hell did, didn't I? Um, so, um, but again, I'm going to give you those extra details because we're ghost hunting. We'll stir shit up in here and we're going to leave. That's how this goes. Um, so this is Philadelphia Alley. Easy for me to remember because Philadelphia is where Eliza Pinckney's buried, right? But this used to be called Duelers Alley. This is where some of the duels used to occur for the city of Charleston. Um, I say some of the duels because dueling was illegal in the 1700s and they had to find hiding spots. This just happened to be one of those hiding spots. So here's the story that goes with the location and why it's haunted. A doctor moves down here from Rhode Island. His name is Dr. Joseph Brown Ladd. For those of you that are still listening to your spirit boxes, if you guys hear the song Brown Eyed Girl while we're here, it's not uncommon. It's part of his name. We get it all the time. Um, but anyway, Doc moves here because he's supposed to get married to his fiance Amanda. Amanda just inherited a lot of money from her dead parents, and she has an attorney helping her out with all of this cash flow. The attorney thinks that Dr. Ladd is just after Amanda's money. So he tells Amanda, get rid of that doctor fellow. So he comes down here to Charleston to prove that he's not after her money. 
Uh, he's going to start his medical practice down here. So on his way into town, he had a coachman that set him up to be robbed and killed. It's like having a really bad Uber driver in today's world. So if somebody's taking an Uber home, I'm sorry, but I just ruined that for you. Uh, but anyway, um, so that, there was somebody walking by and seeing what was about to happen to the newcomer because he knew the coachman. That somebody walking by was named Ralph Isaacs. Do those initials sound familiar at all? Rhode Island, Rhode Island, where the doctor came from. Okay. So we were getting the letters uh, RI on regular spirit boxes all the time. So I bought another device, which is the one that broke at home today that I was trying to fix. It gives us letters like a Ouija board. Uh, it only works off of EMF. That's how it operates. Uh, but it was malfunctioning, so I destroyed it apparently. Uh, but anyway, moving on. Ralph tells the doctor, hey dude, I know this guy, the coachman. He's going to try to kill you. Why don't you come with me to go to 59 Church Street, and you can rent a room from these friends of mine, and you'll be safe. The doctor took him up on the offer and the two gentlemen became friends. The longer the doctor stays here, the more money he's making. He's proving his point. He's not after Amanda's money, he's making his own. But she gets wind of this and she's moving down so they could be married. Dr. Ladd then became known as the Whistling Doctor. This is why I was gonna take this out of my route. I hate cliches. Every haunted city you will ever visit is gonna have a cliched whistling ghost. We all have one. Um, so some of you are from different like, other haunted cities, you guys get it. Um, but there's some legitimacy to this, we're gonna get to that. So why are we in Dooler's Alley during this whole tale of why am I telling you this? Dr. Ladd and Ralph go see plays together, but they can't sit next to each other because the doctor makes more money. That's the hierarchy of Charleston. He gets better seats. So they go see Richard III one night from Shakespeare, and on the way home, they're discussing the new actress they just saw. Doc thought she was great. Ralph didn't. Then they start arguing, and now Ralph is insulting the doctor's fiance, Amanda, back home in Rhode Island. It got really ugly, and they go their separate ways. But the next day, Ralph went to his friends at the newspaper and placed an ad in the paper telling the whole city of Charleston what he thinks of the doctor. Kind of a, you're a disgrace to society kind of bullshit. And Doc saw this and rebuttaled with, let's go to Dooler's Alley. Somebody's going to die and we're going to settle this. Keep this in mind that the whole argument started over an actress and shit was really dumb in the 1700s. <laughs> so the two gents came down, he took her back to back and 10 paces away from each other. And then they turned and Doc pointed his gun in the air and shot his one shot. He did not want to kill his friend. He just wanted the courage to show up to the fight, which is often what happens at a duel. But Ralph has his one bullet still, and he puts it in the kneecap on the doctor. The doc didn't die, he fell to the ground. His friends picked him up and took him home to 59 Church Street, where he died 10 days later, on November 2nd of 1786, after refusing medical treatment. Two things about the last statement I just said. First off, it is 1786. Gunshot wounds are a lot different back then than what we know of them now, or your ghost. So, he refused medical treatment because he is a doctor. He probably just thought he had lead poisoning and probably just tried to bleed it out himself, but he failed, obviously, because he died. Now, every ghost tour is telling their guests to listen for the whistles while they're down here. We have three cameras running plus my voice recorder. If we're gonna capture a disembodied whistle, more than likely gonna show up on one of those four devices. However, can't tell you how many times I've gone through Jacob's recording, and when I'm going through your guys' spot check, it's minute one, five, 10, 15. I'm not looking for anything. I'm just randomly looking through those particular minutes in a very weird incremental manner. Um, the whistling part of a song will show up, and then the word doctor immediately after, and then I'll look at the timestamp and say, oh, we are down to Willow's Alley at that point. It happens all the time. Doctor, it just, I can't tell you how many times. I've been coming here for five years, dozens at this point. Um, so just kind of take that for what it's worth. If you're gonna try this on your own, because remember I've been kicked out of here, we're gonna talk about that next, and you walk all the way through here with your voice recorders from your phone, listening for those whistles, just remember every local knows the damn story. Anybody walking up and down Cumberland or Queen Street, we all throw a whistle down the alley. It's just something we do here. Um, so keep that in mind. Let's talk about how I got booted out of here. So, especially when we don't have a whole lot of people around us. Um, the way we came in, there was a wall up there about halfway between us and Cumberland Street. Um, and the reason why the wall was there is because this is where they kept the livestock in the city of Charleston. This was called Cow Alley. So why am I telling you this? They started down there and worked their way this way over the years, so the alley that you fully see. So this is where the cows, goats, and chickens were kept. But those bricks down there where they started are obviously older than the ones you're standing on. Those are sun-dried bricks from slave children. There's a full handprint from a slave child down at the end of this alley. And I used to take my group all the way down there to, after their history lesson to go see it. We all need to see how far we've come from slavery here in Charleston. However, it was a history lesson. There's nothing paranormal about that damn brick. The reason being, oh, that was a perfect screen for Halloween night, right? Um, um, but anyway, you guys already know how I feel about cemeteries. That kid is not staring at that brick in the afterlife. That's the last place you're going to find him. So, November 26, 2020, took my entire group of 10, same size as you guys, all the way down there pointing out the brick and we're gonna continue on, but that group decided to stop.
and they're huddled around the damn brick, just like we are right now, <laughs> waiting for something to happen. I'm trying to shoo them along because I know nothing's going to happen, and we're standing outside the dining room window of the beautiful mansion at the end of the alley. I'm trying to be respectful to the neighbor, not realizing we were out of bounds. I was still new at this. So, the new owner of that mansion came out screaming his head off. My daughter was on the tour that night. She was about 14, and she thought it was absolutely hysterical oh. that her father was getting yelled at. <laughs> she was all about it, and we moved on. The next day was Thanksgiving. I don't tour on holidays simply because I worked in upper management for Walmart before I started doing this. You guys fight over towels on Thanksgiving, and you start <laughs> me for life. So I don't do Thanksgiving especially. The next day, I called my partner that brought me into tourism, and I told him what happened. He's laughing at me just because he already got the, the complaint. And uh, he said, dude, you're only allowed to go down halfway. You gotta reroute your group. So, um, and this was gonna come up this way, I believe. No, maybe not. I think he's waiting for the whole group to come through. Um, so, what I told my group that night, because it's Black Friday, I'm sold out again. I was like, guys, I don't believe in the next story. I've never had anything happen up there. I'm into vampires, not pirates. I would normally tell you a pirate story next, but I've been kicked out of there too. Um, we'll talk about that later. Um, but anyway, before we left, are they coming through now? Yep. He's used to us standing here. It's kind of my spot. So before we left this space, somebody with a spirit box heard the name Anne. Well, if I say pirates, what's the first pirated name that you think of? Arr. No, but what's oh. the name? <laughs> Blackbeard. Blackbeard. Oh, sorry. Sorry, no, sorry. Sorry, no, sorry. No, sorry. No, no, you're fine. I feel bad. I no, no, you're fine. That's all the company comfort. That was the guy I left. Chicks, did say the right name. And Bonnie, yeah. yeah. But you're thinking of Blackbeard, right? Yeah. yeah. Most people think of Blackbeard, right? Mm -hmm. I, yeah. somebody, I asked that question last night, and somebody said Jack Sparrow. I'm like, he's not a real pirate. <laughs> <laughs> um, but anyway, so yeah, the correct answer to that would be Blackbeard. But uh, we were going to look for Anne Bonnie. Um, she does have a tie to Charleston because she lived nearby. Um, so we would investigate over at the Potter Magazine because she would recognize the building because it was being built at the same time she came here. Um, so that's, that's kind of where we would normally go. Um, but I was kind of like, okay, maybe we'll get something. We go up and around the corner, and I didn't know much about pirates in Charleston, and somebody else heard the number 300. I didn't know what that meant. I wrote it down. I did the research that morning, uh, the next morning, rather, and we were there on November 28th of 2020, and Bonnie's trial for piracy was November 28th of 1720. Oh. We were there on the exact 300th anniversary of her pirate trial. Huh. Well, you guys are giving me that, oh, wow, that's cool. I was actually quite pissed off. Um, I told you I'm not into pirates at the time. Um, so I have a master's degree in creative writing, and I research a lot. And I like facts and data. Pirate stories come from pirate lore. That's a problem. It was written 100 years after the days of Blackbeard and Anne Bonny. So whenever you guys found something that could have been something, I have to read like five more textbooks <laughs> to be able to verify that shit. Um, so it was a lot of reading. Half my library right now is all books on pirates, and now I can't even tell you the damn story anymore. <laughs> um, I've read more books on pirates, documentaries, video games, you name it. If it dealt with pirates, I did my research and went all the way around the horn with it, including all the original documents, and even read some of the uh, logs from Blackbeard himself. Um, so very interesting pieces if you know how to get a hold of them. Um, but anyway, we're going to go up and around the corner. Uh, I'm going to take Dennis's camera and change out his light and do a, uh, an extra attachment on there because it's going to have like a focal point on there. And this is going to be a new story to replace a story that I don't want to tell. Um, and that story is creeping up on me every single night because more and more clues keep coming up from it uh, for me to go back and retell the story I don't want to tell you. Um, so I'll tell you a little bit about it in the event something actually pops up from it. But we're experimenting with a new tail to see if we can get more out of it because uh, I've got a few pieces and I want more. All three cameras will be in play here. Uh, we're going to be going up to the cemetery and I want all three cameras basically pointed in the same directions to see if we get one reaction from one. I want to know what the other two cameras did in retrospect. Um, so that's the hope here. Um, so all the spirit boxes and all that stuff will also be in play once I'm done going through the history and we'll get up close to that cemetery and hopefully we'll be out of the way of other tours. Um, have you gotten, anybody gotten anything weird coming out of your devices, by right the way? Right before you said the name that was the third, it said third on mine. It was probably like a good like two minutes before you said something about okay. somebody the third. I heard uh, November 25th. We still get things from Aunt Bonnie, by the way. Like, it's not like she stopped haunting the place because I'm not allowed over there, so. But isn't Jack her former Yeah. 
I did have a Jack. That's who Jack Sparrow was based on. It was. I did have oh, Jack really? that come through on mine as well. Jack Rackham. Yeah. I had Jack that come through on mine, but I thought it was just because we were talking about Jack Sparrow. So, you said third and then Jack. And what was the other piece that you got out of yours? I heard November 25th. November 25th. Um, what's kind of funny about that is I want to say November 25th is one of those majors that we've already mentioned between Anne Barney, Calico Jack, and Blackbeard. One of them birthdays is on November 25th. So I'm going to dive into that and see if it actually ties in. Um, if it's Jack, obviously we got a little bit of something going on. Um, any numbers coming out of the EMF meters at all since we've been here? I got it at one something. It was about yeah, the highest. I'm going to throw that one out. Okay, mm-hmm. nothing on yours. No weird sounds. Just no. humming. Just humming. Okay. Just humming along. Just humming. Just humming along. Um, I know. I know right? So, um, so you will be unmuted from here to there. When we stop, obviously you'll go back to mute again. Okay. Uh, I'll tell the story, get us closer to the cemetery, and then you'll be unmuted again. And people will be looking at us like we're a bunch of weirdos. Let's do this. Let's All right, do Doc. It. He's gonna follow us around. So let's do it. I literally said every word that I hear on this thing, I would be out of breath. At least. I'm going to just keep the camera rolling, I guess. <laughs> Broke back now. Like, we're in Charleston, so for a guy like me to like have access, that's a no. Like oh, really? these people slam the doors in my face quicker than I can even say, <laughs> I'm a ghost. And they're like, nope. <laughs> have a seat. We're going to chill here for just a few minutes. Dennis, I'm going to stay up here with you. Trying to come see you. Okay. All right, so what we're going to do here is we're going to take off this light, turn it off so we can turn it in my pocket. Put on this one so we know that it's dead. And we're going to attach this guy on there. So it's the exact same light, but it's still got an extra focal spotlight on there. Obviously, we got our flood, and now we have a spot. So, with a spot, we can actually zero in. So, if you like, stretch it out, it goes really small. And then, you can play around with it. See, so obviously, the closer you get this way, the brighter it's going to be. Um, so, once we get up into that area, um, you'll be able to play around with it. So, it's basically just this end here. And you can just leave the button on, it doesn't matter. But you can just squeeze it this way. It's, what do we got uh, weird? Dead. Talk to me. I got revenge in 99 while we were walking. I got bleeding. Okay. Yeah. I need to tell a different story. Um, okay. That's how it goes. This is, this is why we do like that we don't know what's going to happen. And fellowship. Revenge 99. Revenge was Blackbeard's boat. It was. But the 99 has more relevance to me than anything else. Gotcha. Um, so we're going to go with the story that I didn't want to tell you. <laughs> of course. Um, and then what was the phrase you caught? I got bleeding and fellowship. Anybody else? Jacob? Did you get anything? 
injury. Pastor Michael? Right in which way? Oh, we did get the word writing earlier that I didn't explain. Remember when I told you I was going to explain it? Remember when we were unsure of where it was when it was close to the alley? Um, so she got the word writing that showed up there, and we do get like poetry and writing uh, while we're over near the alley, only because the doctor did write poetry while he was here, and his sister Elizabeth published all of his work after he died. So he liked to be recognized for that as well. Um, so let's tell the damn story that I didn't want to tell you. Great. Um, so. Uh, I know, it's like real, real encouraging, okay. right? Um, so. I said my fingers that don't bleed, but I was. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry, I'm just Damn. telling you. Damn. I heard don't believe, and then it like it said the host. Don't believe the host. Wow. Um, so, same kind of concept, uh, same type of cameras. I do want you guys working, you know, in together once we get up there. Every ghost tour goes up there, and I've been trying to get away from the story. You guys are going to see why here in just a minute. Um, they are all up there as their grand finale of the night because they have something to show and tell. There's a sign that reads inside the gate that says there's no ghost here but the Holy Ghost. They don't want jerks like me with cameras like Dennis's to go up there and try to recreate what happened. Uh, so if you've taken a ghost tour in Charleston, you've probably heard this story before. But let me get into detail of why I don't like to tell it. Um, so here's how it goes. They're all looking for an apparition. So what happened was 1888, a young lady died by the name of Sue Howard Hardy. What are her initials spell out? S-H-H. So what's it spell out? Shh. Exactly. It's cheesy, it's campy, but we've gotten it before, especially on that Ouija board device that we don't have tonight. Um, and we've seen it show up on our word list before too, so just take it for what it's worth. But anyway, Sue dies six days after her stillborn child. It's a very sad story, right? But 99 years later, 1987, on the exact anniversary of Sue's death, uh, local photographer uh, Harry Reynolds is taking pictures of all of our beautiful cemeteries, putting a, a book together, and he does capture a full apparition. It's 1987, and he doesn't have the tech that we have now, so he has to send it off to Kodak. I don't think I have to explain what Kodak is to this group. That's super great. Um, yeah. By the way, teenagers think it's a bear. Yeah. <laughs> you think it's a bear? A bear. Oh, a bear. Oh, a bear. bear. Like a Sorry, Kodiak. Like Kodiak. Okay. Um, so anyway, so Kodak can, can confirm that the picture he took it on came from the camera that he said he took it with and that the picture was not altered in any way. Um, so now we have this great apparition, but it is cursed to females. So the curse behind it is that females handling it, even in a digital format, uh, tablet, phone, whatever, are said to have the same symptoms like what we talked about at the beginning. So headache, nausea, dizziness. Pregnant females are said to not have a good pregnancy based off the gist of the story of being a stillborn child. Yeah, kind of, I don't play around with this guy. They do this full time. Um, so I am going to show you guys what this apparition looks like. And just going to ask you don't touch the damn tablet there's mainly females in this group tonight uh, so take that for what it's worth now i did not tell this story last night so when i get back to the office and i started going through the word list because i didn't tell the folks this story um the phrase cold baby and then photograph showed up on the word list that sarah's using in a row like right next to each other timestamps right next to where we were but we were across the street talking about something else where we got no activity whatsoever so <coughs> Let's bring up this apparition, and then we're going to go up there. We're going to get about, I don't know, 8 to 10 minutes worth of footage um, and kind of see what we can capture. And then I'll pull us back down here and kind of tell you about our last location because it is completely different than what we've been doing. Uh, you guys will see what's going to happen, uh, what the hell I'm going to be doing to you guys at that last spot. Um, it's a little bit nuts. So we'll kind of go through it. So I'll go down two by two so you guys can see it. We'll take this up. Oh, yeah. Right here. <coughs> Oh yeah, they all show it, and sometimes they'll like open it up on a tablet and pass it around. I'm like, oh, they have QR codes, so you pull it up on your own phone. Oh, that's yeah. super great. <laughs> Somebody else nice pulled it up. So full picture that he took. Your apparition's here. Then you're looking at the woman praying over her own grave oh. with the baby basket right next to her. You guys see it now? Yeah. So. Here, Looking at the back of the woman oh, yeah. crying, baby basket. You just got the chills. I can see that. <laughs> cool. 
All right, so when we get up there, again, all three cameras right up to the gate, spirit boxes, loud and proud. Um, we're gonna be listening in for, like I said, about eight to 10 minutes. EMF readers, so I got one in front of me. I keep forgetting who has my other one. Where's the other EMF? Oh, you got swapped out. Um, yeah, we swapped. Yeah. yeah. Um, so again, we've seen some weird anomalies up there between like fives and nines. So if you get anything weird, it should be zeros, but we'll see what we can capture. So if you get a five or a nine, anything above a 2.5, I'm gonna be excited about. Um, so we're gonna try to debunk it first, but we'll kind of see what we got. All right, let's go get some footage. Let's do it. Plus our turn. Let's get all three cameras up here. So Katie, you up here too. Um, where's Ron? Come on over, Ron. I want to show you where this grave is actually at. So do you guys see the cross headstone way in the back there? Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, Sue's grave is just to the left and one more row back. We were actually closer to her when we were in the alleyway, but this is the only way we can actually see it. Um, so yeah, let's get those cameras like right up in there and let's see if we can capture it. Yeah, good luck trying to get that through those bars. <laughs> mm -hmm. As soon as I said it, I was like, okay, I'm not so right around when we get up to eight minutes, then it's just kind of give us a heads up. Okay. And uh, I'll just, if, we, if another tour comes up and is like waiting to use the space, I'll probably cut it short and get out of their way. Katie, that's perfect. Keeping it nice and still kind of helps us debunk instead of moving it around. So that's good because there's a lot of layers in there. Perfect. I got zero readings. Except the temperature below that you said was yeah seventy five point nine. It's a little warm. It's about seventy five. One hundred and fifteen. That's great. Now it says two forty one. We're yeah. burning up out here, everybody. <laughs> Heat wave. So I got sixty six. So. Yeah, it's about right. <laughs> You guys can ask questions if you want. This is a free for all location. So I, the Pinkney Mansion, I just try to you know, control that one just because of how sensitive she can be. Yeah. With this one, again, if you guys want to ask questions, things we can verify, things we can't, it's completely up to you. Like, is there a spirit here with us? Those kind of questions? Sure, go for it. Okay. Is there anybody here? Come to the gate to see us. Just show up. Show yeah. Across the, yeah. We got three different type of boxes here. I can see you. You'll show up in one of them. You just gotta walk across, Sue. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Who brought this guy? <laughs> You're fired. He's actually doing a great shot for us, just in case you guys are wondering. Like, yeah. It is not hard. It's not easy to hold that thing like completely know, steady. Yeah, he's it. doing great. There's a lot of weight on that thing. Yeah. Like, he he's got like, strong hands. He's like pressed against like, <laughs> solid. I guess there aren't any spirits here that want to come see us. You could walk by and we could see you. Still got zeros. Spotlight they have out there. Mm -hmm. using cameras. Do you guys see the light up there to the left? Mm -hmm. So the church put that up there on purpose to try to deter people from taking photographs up here because it causes uh, light flares. Okay. Um, I want you guys to take note that you cannot see light flares in the cameras that you're using. So it's like put your phone up there, it's gonna cause a light flare. 100 percent That's why it's angled the way that it is. Gotcha. Do you hear any words?
And what, what was her name, supposedly? Sue Howard Hardy. Sue, okay. Sue, you're here. Come walk by us. Jacob, you got anything? You got anything? You have anything it? coming through? Uh, nothing really. Okay. I've still got zeros. Okay. Mm -hmm. Excited about 2.5s here. This is not the Pinkney Mansion, so yeah. Those little blips mean something. Pinkney Mansion can just go nuts. Oh, she's got something. No, it's the post. Oh, it's a post. Okay. Yeah. I was getting excited. No. Or it's that. Yeah, it's tree. that. It's that post right there behind the tree. It did it in the in the uh, other okay. one too. I think you're just picking up that tree right. In front it's of you. right the post. Yeah. Can yep. you put it up higher to get over those branches? Oh. No, because then it picks up, <laughs> then it picks up the right tree. There's... Yeah, but right down there was something. It's the post. That's just a tree, but like whatever that is, it's, it's not a tree. the post. The post doesn't have eyes. The eyes are like two feet above the post. <clears throat> I'm not doing this with you. Show your room. No, Kathleen. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 But he said you want to see it like walking. It's yeah. staying in the same spot. Yeah, and it's right on that post. Oh, that one's kind of jumping. Oh, hey. Yeah, it's just picking up all those objects right there. Deliver. Mm -hmm. You see anything, babe? I see the You see what? I see the spray markers. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying yeah, I kind of like it. it. Yeah. So we were, we were getting something on hers. That's got to be somebody. That's got, but but, not, but it's, it's coming right over that post. Yeah. Yeah. It almost looks like something like peeking around the tree. Can you point where, I, where it was at, Katie? That, that post right, right there. right at that post. Yeah, so picking up on obviously this and yeah and it's picking up on the outline yeah of that in the background as well yeah so. need to see that thing walking at us <laughs> yeah and it also you know doing some kind of motion that we requested doing the Dougie. right yeah okay. nobody wants to walk past us what's our timer look like Dennis yeah. six minutes total okay. like it's Saturday we're not hanging out here <laughs> they're out partying that whole baby photograph thing though like that was like those, those people didn't even know that story. I didn't yeah. tell the story last yeah. night. So yeah, that happened last night. That was last night. So the cool thing is, is for your guys' data, like you'll be able to scroll down and see any other date you want to. So right. you can just go back to last night's data and go see my notes from theirs too. I don't hide anything. It's right. all up for grabs. Right. See now, what is that? Is that showing the tree up there? So yeah. That's these are the all tree. leaves up here. Okay. Yeah. So we kind of talked about those earlier, but this outline right here is picking up on the tree trunk. You can see it directly it. there. And then it's basically trying to make it look like a stick figure because that's what it's designed to do. Right. But if we have like where the three points are for the face, if it's like in a leafy area, I ob obviously have to throw that right. stuff out. Right. It's too easy. All right. I think it's fair to say let's go ahead and stop those cams. What do you think, Dennis? Sure. Okay. All right. Let's do it. Let's go. Ahead. Actually, get blindfolds in bulk on Amazon underneath the Fifty Shades of Grey tab. Oh, interesting. <laughs> good, good tip. Yeah, right? That's not pretty good. Um, so, again, these will open all the way up like Batman masks. They will not go all the way around your head. They love them. They look so cool. Um, so, we will come back and give you a few tips and tricks. We're going to go right over there for about five minutes. You guys can come besties for five minutes, right. exchange TikToks, whatever the hell you're going to do. Um, but, yeah, we'll be over there chit chatting it up, and then I'll come back. And there's a couple of tips and tricks that family members are going to also need to know, except for you, because you can be able to hear us, you guys won't. Okay. Um, so I'll explain that once we come back over, and then we'll get this party started. Okay. Anybody else? Follow me. I'm going to go this way. See ya. Bye. 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 Bye.
know what I mean. We might have to remind Katie to tell us what she's hearing. <laughs> so you might want to lift up her headset. Exactly. Hmm? Are you hearing stuff? Huh? Are you hearing stuff? Yeah, tell us what you're, you're hearing. Tell us what you're hearing. Oh. Even the radio commercials that come on, tell us what you're hearing. Oh. It's like that. <laughs> through here because the house he lived in, 59 Church Street, is right around the corner. His code word is purple. So it's not a common word you would okay. normally see. <laughs> I like the 2.7 and we have something. That's a good yeah. sign. Henry, you can use another image through the blue box. <laughs> I asked you about your work. Crazy. What does the name Katie mean to you, Henry? Confused. Henry, what does the name Katie mean to you? I'm in love with you. How did you meet Katie? Can you tell us that? You can show us in the blue box. That way Donna doesn't fall asleep in there. <laughs> Hen Henry was her school teacher. Remember? Just so you guys know. When she was 16 years old when you met her, Katie was her teacher. That's kind of weird. Historically? Henry, how did you meet Katie? Version. 
sleeping? Tell us how you met your wife. Or you can just say her name and that'll give us a little bit more verification. Samuel. Corner booth. Henry, where was the schoolhouse where you met your wife? Where was that? What city was that in? Can you tell us? This isn't a subject I normally discuss with you, by the way. So this is kind of a little bit more. I'm in love with you. That's the second time from a different person. Henry, what city was the schoolhouse in? Where you met your wife, Katie? Fine. You need to find out what city was it. You tell us. Put things together. If I tell you what city it is, can you verify it for me? That's a yes, no question. No. Okay. Can you tell us what city it is? She's been doing that the whole time. That's all. I just noticed how I mean, it's been. Yeah, she's been. Past few minutes. She's been doing that since we started. This is why I don't write anything down while we're doing these. I keep an eye on everybody's breathing. Make sure everybody's good to go. Henry, we are definitely running out of time. We got about maybe two to three minutes left. I could do better on my own. How so? Whatever exists. Did somebody else come here with you? I don't care. Henry, who else came here with you? Two? Two people? Maybe. You got two people with you, Henry? Get out. Jab. Henry, if you'd like us to leave, tell us the word home. I'm not going to respond to threats. Carlson. Yeah. Do you know where they're on Henry, one more image and we'll wrap this Bad up. Bad option in my mind. Henry, one last question about this. going twice. How you feel about it? Uh, we don't want to leave, but you're not giving us much. So last leave. night. You'll remember. <laughs> I got it recorded. Henry going once, twice. Last chance for an image. Alright, let's get these ladies tapped out, family members. Let's see what we got going on. We have one image. One image was fired. Hey, you That's know what? It. It's better than the past four nights we've got to do that. Okay. Uh, cameras, you can go ahead and put a stop to those.